Hello, welcome to another episode of Fun with Maps. I'm your host, Dan Hansen, and today, well, you know, if you're anything like me, when you hear the news or you watch some movies or TV shows, you hear some of these exotic locales, and you just wish you knew more about them, where they were, something about them. I'm talking about places like Casablanca, Marrakesh, Algiers, um, Morocco, Fez, Tunisia, the Barbary Coast, things like that. I wish, I wish I knew more about those places. Now is the time. This is the episode for that. So today is the first in a series looking at the map of the uh, second largest continent in the world by land area and the second most populous, and that, of course, is Africa. And we're going to look at. Uh, well, I should really tell you the first most populous is Asia, of course, and the Asia is also the largest. So Asia is the largest continent, most populous, and Africa is the second largest and second most populous. So Africa is about 11.7 million square miles, including some of the adjacent islands. You know, we looked at Madagascar in one of the previous episodes of uh, Fun with Maps. Uh, it's about 6% of the Earth's total surface area area and about 20% of its land area. So as of 2018 there are about um, 1.3 billion people in Africa which is about 16% of the world's population. So about 16% live here in Africa. Um, here's a fun with maps fact. The population of Africa is actually the youngest of any continent in the world. The average age is like something like 19.5 um, years old, whereas the, the median age for the rest of the world is like 30.4 years old. So they're very young, uh, very young continent. So let me zoom in a little on this nice new big uh, map of Africa I got. So here we go with Africa, right? So as you know, I'm sure, um, Africa here is separated from Europe by the Mediterranean Sea, okay? We all know that. There's Gibraltar. Here's Europe. Here's Northern Africa. It's bordered over here by the Atlantic Ocean. North Atlantic through South Atlantic. Okay? It's bordered over here on the uh, east by the Indian Ocean. And there's Madagascar. We looked at that before. And up here it's very interesting because it's bordered up here in the northeast by Suez here, the Sinai Peninsula, okay? Here's Egypt, right? Saudi Arabia, Israel, Jordan. This area here is called the Sinai Peninsula, or just Sinai. Here's the Red Sea, okay? And when we looked at the Horn of Africa, we saw some of the Red Sea and all that stuff. But Sinai here, actually you can walk across here from... Uh, um, Africa to Asia. And here we have the Suez Canal cutting in through there. So, you know, Ptolemy and some of the early geographers um, called Sinai and actually Egypt is part of uh, Asia because it's connected here. But for geopolitical reasons, um, Egypt is considered part of Africa. And here the Sinai Peninsula, that's part of Africa, part of Egypt, part of Africa too. So, Mediterranean Sea, Atlantic Ocean, Indian Ocean, Gulf of Aden, Red Sea, and here's the uh, Sinai Peninsula, and that's the bordering of Africa. You know, as we said, the continent includes Madagascar and some of the archipelagos out here. Here's the Seychelles, all that. Um, Africa contains 54 see some of them here, 54 fully recognized sovereign countries, states, eight territories, and two uh, de facto independent states, okay? So the most northern point is up here in Tunisia, and if you go down to the most southern point down here in uh, South Africa, that's about 5,000 miles, okay? If we go over to the far west, just outside of Senegal, there's this peninsula um, Cape Verde, it's peninsula of Senegal, it's westernmost point of the continent of Africa, okay, and that just means green cape, and if you go all the way to the east, 
and we saw this when we did the Horn of Africa. The easternmost point is going to be in uh, Somalia here. So this distance east to west is about 4,600 miles. So we got about 5,000 north south at its highest point and about 4,600 east west at its highest point. So largest country, well you can see from the map even, it's Algeria. Algeria up here, um, the smallest country is the Seychelles Islands it's out here in the Indian Ocean. Um, the smallest country on the mainland is here, this little strip surrounded by Senegal there, it's called the Gambia. So the Gambia is the smallest country on the mainland, Seychelles, the islands there, and the largest is Algeria. Um, largest by population is down here, Nigeria. So there's all these nations and they, they've they cooperated with uh, an entity called the African Union and that's headed, headquartered here in Ethiopia in the capital, Addis Ababa, which we've looked at before. So here's a fun with maps fact. You see this coastline of Africa, second biggest continent, but the coastline is only 16,000 miles long, which means there's not a lot of indents and harbors and all that, it's pretty smooth. So to give you some idea, some comparison, okay, Europe up here is only 4,000 square miles, right? About a third the surface of Africa. But Europe has oh, a coastline of 20,000 miles or so. They got all these little nooks and crannies here. So they've got 20,000 miles of coastline and they're a third the size of Africa, which has only about 16,000 miles. So that's, that's pretty cool. So you know, the whole history of Africa in the late 19th century, um, European countries, you know, colonized most of most of Africa, and most of these present states um, emerged from a process of decolonization from their uh, from the European countries that had colonized them. So Africa is so large, we can't cover this in one episode. In fact, we're going to do it in many. Um, it, it naturally breaks down into several regions. You know, the uh, the west, the north. Central, East, Southern, and then some of the dependencies. In this first Fun with Maps episode about Africa, we're going to look at North Africa. And that consists of going from uh, East to West, Egypt, Libya, Tunisia, Algiers, Algeria, Morocco, and we're going to include Western Sahara with Morocco, as we uh, mentioned, uh, Mauritania, and also Sudan, separate from South Sudan. So I think you'll be amazed, you know, look how close some of these uh, countries and cities are to Europe. Just, I mean, this is Straits of Gibraltar, so close to Spain, Morocco. Um, some of these are so interesting, they've got to be the subject of their own Fun With Map episode soon. But right now, let's just have some fun and take a look at uh, North Africa. So here's the regions of Africa that we're going to look at. In the blue here is the north, green is the west, here's the central, here's the east, including Madagascar, and here's the south. Today, we're going to talk about the north Africa here. So here's Sudan, here's Egypt, here's Libya. Here's Tunisia, here's Algeria, the largest, here's Morocco, and here's Western Sahara. So here's a topographic map of Africa, and there are three main geographic features here. There's the uh, Nile and the Nile Basin up here, emptying out through Egypt into the Mediterranean. There's the Sahara Desert, which is huge. And then up here are the Atlas Mountains. Uh, they're about 1,600 miles uh, long. They separate the Atlantic Ocean and the Mediterranean. And down here is the Sahara. So you've got the uh, uh, Atlas Mountains here through Morocco and Algeria and Tunisia. So you can see here on this map of Africa, it's easy to see that Algeria here in green is uh, by far the largest 
country in Africa. There's a couple others close, but Algeria is the largest. It's about uh, 919,000 square miles. It's also, that makes it the 10th largest country in the world. And not only the largest by area in the African Union, but also the Arab world. And it's, you know, f to give some perspective, we know how big Texas is. Algeria is about almost three and a half times the size of Texas. So it's, it's big geographically. It's got a population of about 44 million, which makes it uh, the ninth most populous country in Africa. So here we have... No surprise here. Here's the Sahara Desert, and we just saw up here, coming through here, are the Atlas Mountains. Down here is the Sahara, and here's uh, Algeria separated, Tunisia, Libya, Niger, Mali, Mauritania, West Sahara, Morocco. Up here is the uh, Mediterranean Sea. Look how close they are to Italy and um, Spain and, and the rest of Europe. The capital is up here, right on the coast, the Mediterranean coast. Uh, that's Algiers. Um, you know, you may have heard that Bob Dylan song. If you see her, say hello. She might be in Algiers. So Algiers is an exotic location we've always seen. You know, Algeria has known many empires and dynasties through, uh, through the ages. They had the Numidians back in the 3rd century, the Phoenicians, the Carthaginians, the Romans, the Vandals, the Byzantines a dozen different Arab and Berber dynasties, the Spaniards, the Ottoman Turks. And actually, it was under the uh, Ottoman Turks that the Barbary pirates operated uh, all through North Africa and preyed on shipping, you know, in the around 1500 to a couple hundred years. When the French captured Algiers in 1830, that kind of put an end to the uh, Barbary pirates here. So you can see how close France is up there. Algiers is right here. You know, uh, here's a fun with map fact. So you've heard of the Barbary Coast, right? The name derives from the Berbers. That's the term used by Europeans from like the 16th to the 19th century to, uh, to refer to this whole coastal region, region of what we now consider Morocco, Algeria, uh, Tunisia, and Libya. So the French heavily colonized in the late 19th and early 20th century. There's a bloody eight-year struggle uh, which culminated in uh, uh, Algerian independence in 1962. I guess when I think of Algeria, um, I think of the uh, stuff from movies. It, it looks kind of like... This is kind of the image I think of, always thought of of Algeria. You know, it's a big desert. There's a Sahara Desert and a, a, a nomad uh, walking through with camels in the desert. but. Uh, as we've seen, Algeria uh, is a lot more than that. Going alphabetically, the next uh, country in North Africa would be Egypt. And you can see here's Egypt in green um, in the northeast. You know, it's, it's, I'm just going to touch on Egypt here because we've, we covered Egypt a little when we did the Fun with Maps episode on the Nile River. But Egypt really deserves its own uh, episode sometime. So we're going to do that. You know, Egypt has one of the longest histories of any country in the world. Um, it traces its heritage along the Nile Delta back to the 6th to 4th millennia BCE. We, you know, here's a little zoom in of Egypt, and of course, the Nile River is such a dominant uh, uh, geographic feature of, of Egypt, going right through Cairo, out through Alexandria, into the Metal Mediterranean Sea, We've got Luxor down here, Aswan. We've seen some of this through uh, in our previous episode on the Nile River. But um, the Nile River, if you remember, it's regular and it's rich. So there's a Nile River flood annually. And then the regularity and richness of that, plus you've got this semi-isolation of the deserts to the west and the east this allowed for the development of one of the world's greatest civilizations. You know, it's a cradle of civilizations. They, in ancient Egypt, we saw some of the earliest developments of writing, agriculture, urbanization, organized religion, central government, all that stuff. So, you know, here's Egypt. What's we did touch on in the introduction of this the Sinai Peninsula, which is pretty fascinating. Let's look at the map of that. This is a great image from. Uh, 
from space. Actually, this is from Gemini 11, the Gemini 11 spacecraft of the Sinai Peninsula. So you can see part of Egypt here, and then here's the Sinai Peninsula, and then you got, you know, the uh, what they call the Levant back here, with the the other countries there. This is another great map. Um, this is from 1869. It's an ordnance survey of the peninsula of Sinai. And it's the first scientifically accurate map of the peninsula. Uh, it was done in 1869. So you can see, okay, here's the Gulf of Suez. And here's Egypt. And connecting up here. And here's the Sinai Peninsula, what they call the Peninsula of Sinai. That's a great, great classic map. So here's another map, a uh, classic map of Egypt. Um, shows a little different details. And again, here we have Lake Nasser going up Aswan, Luxor, Nile River to Cairo here, Giza, um, Alexandria here, into the Mediterranean Sea. Desert, desert. Here's the Red Sea, Sinai Peninsula. It's a pretty good map. Um, Nile River Delta up there. You know, when we look at size of Egypt, it's about um, it's about three times the size of New Mexico, or for us here in Ohio, it's about eight times the size of Ohio. So it's it's pretty big. It's not as big as Algeria, but it's pretty big. And of course, when a lot of us think of Egypt, you know, we think of that great civilization and the pyramids and the Sphinx and the tombs and all that great stuff. Here's a, a great photo of the statues of the Pharaoh Ramses II at Abu Simbel. Um, it's a twin temple to the temple of Queen Nefertari in Nubia, which is southern Egypt. And it was carved out of a mountainside in the 13th century BC. So it's just, it's pretty incredible what was done in Egypt. It's really, uh, um, obviously it's a popular tourist destination and it's certainly on my bucket list. But again, we'll get in more into Egypt in a separate episode someday. Next alphabetically would be Libya, um, another fascinating country. Libya, you can see here in the green, it's the uh, it's about 700,000 square miles, so it's the fourth largest country in Africa. Okay, um, so it's that makes it the 16th largest country in the world, and that's it's uh, about two and a half times the size of Texas, slightly larger than Alaska, so it's big. Um, I guess well we know Libya for many things, but it's it's got the uh, tenth largest proven oil reserves of any country in the world. Here's a, a little zoom in of the map. Um, the capital and largest city is Tripoli. Again, up on the Mediterranean Sea here. There's not a whole lot down here in the Sahara. Um, Tripoli has about three million of Libya's seven million people there. So you've probably heard the Marines hymn. Um, U.S. Marines from the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli. This is the Tripoli they're talking about, okay? And there was a battle in 1805 with the Barbary Pirates, you know, that we talked about the Barbary Pirates, and the Marines were involved, and they added this to the what they call the colors of the Marines, which became the Marines' hymn. And then later in the 1840s, I guess, there was a, uh, the Marines participated in a, a battle in Mexico, um, to a, a area there which one of the names of it were the Halls of Montezuma. So originally it started off um, the shores of Tripoli to the Halls of Montezuma but with the song it got switched around and started off so the Marines hymn goes um, from the Halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli and this is the Tripoli we're talking about here. So what's interesting also of course you know, here, here's Benghazi, a city that's been in the news over the last 10 years or so and all. So that's uh, um, Tripoli and Benghazi, you probably know the, the most. So this is an interesting fact. Um, well over 90% of the population of Libya lives along the Mediterranean coast, in, in between Tripoli to the west and Albeda to the east. So this is where all the people live. Here's a population per square kilometer. You hardly see anything down here in the Sahara. Um, you know, there's lack of surface water. It's the Sahara Desert. So, so a lot of different 
uh, conquering tribes and countries uh, were in Libya over the years. The Italians supplanted the Ottoman Turks around Tripoli in 1911, and they kept hold on it until 1943 when you know Italy was defeated in World War II. So Libya then passed the UN administration, and they got their independence in 1951. Then, you know, there's the whole 1969 coup when Muammar Gaddafi assumed leadership, and the rest is history, which we're not going to get into. But here you can see again, here's Tripoli, Benghazi, lots of desert here. Now, this is a great photo of large and small sand masses in the central Sahara Desert here in Libya. Uh, wind is more powerful here. To shape the land and water. And dunes, which they call dra, from Arabic for arm, dunes are just very large masses of sand and you can see how there's there's smooth floor and the, they have basins between them that were almost empty and sand free. So you see this, these sand masses in the western part of Libya's uh, uh, vast mark Marzouk Sand Sea, and geologists think that the dra or the dunes of the Marzouk were probably formed by winds different from the prevailing north northeast winds of today, because there's a, a lot of smaller dunes that have developed on the back of it. So we have some dunes here out in uh, in Lake County at Mentor Headlands Park, but nothing like this. Obviously, this is a great image from NASA showing the, uh, the dunes in the Sahara Desert in Libya. So next is the country of Mauritania. And Mauritania is over here in the green. You can see it's got some border on the Atlantic, but most of Mauritania is in the Sahara Desert. Um, it's pretty big. It's a little larger than three times the size of New Mexico. It's about six times the size of Florida. Um, the issue with Mauritania is about 90% of Mauritania's land is, is within the Sahara Desert. So consequently, the population is concentrated in the south where uh, precipitation is slightly higher. Let's take a look. So here's a great uh, population uh, density map. You can see all this stuff in the Sahara there. There's just very few people. This is the capital here, the Waukshot. It's right on the uh, Atlantic, so it's got water there. Um, it's the largest city, obviously. It's got about a, a third of the country's four million people of Mauritania live here in the capital. And you can see, you know, you get a little more precipitation down here, so that's where the people here are and along the coast here of the Atlantic. Up here in the Sahara, there's, there's hardly anything. Um, like a lot of uh, the other African countries, they gained their independence. They were a, a colony of France, and they gained their independence in uh, 1960 from France. So here's another good map. You can see some of the other cities. There are, like say, the the cities are mostly down here in the southward. There are a little, little more precipitation. Of course, here in the capital, where most of the people. But with the Sahara here, um, there's just not a lot of opportunity for people to, to live and thrive. This is a great, uh, a great photo of uh, from NASA of Mauritania, the desert. Um, it's showing northwestern Africa, it's showing just the extent of the Sahara Desert. You know, to the north are the dark brown Atlas Mountains, Morocco. To the west, the Atlantic Ocean. South, you know, it's a semi, a little lighter brown Sahelian region. Um, so you can see, you know, if you're going to have population in the Sahara Desert or in this region, it's going to have to be either a little to the south here, Senegal and Mali, at that border, or along the uh, Atlantic coast. Because the Sahara, this, this NASA photo really shows just how huge it is. Uh, and, you know, the Mauritania, like... Each of these countries has their own story, and we're not getting into the politics or history much of it. We're just looking at the maps. But, um, you know, Mauritania has been criticized for its poor human rights record. Um, they still practice slavery, you know, uh, and they've had a historically a caste system. It was abolished supposedly in 1981, 
they were the last country in the world to do so. They finally criminalized it in 2007, but they still have slavery, and there's a lot of issues there in Mauritania. So it's a it's a fascinating area, but like I say, we're, we're just looking at the map here right now. So as we're winding down here in North Africa, uh, we're getting to one of the most fascinating countries, in my opinion. Here's Morocco up here in the green. Um, look at how close it is to Spain there. We'll take a, a look at that there. It just, it's spans an area of about 275,000 square miles, which makes it uh, slightly larger than twice the size of California, okay? And it's got about 37 million people. Uh, Morocco is a country with a rich culture and civilization. Um, it's hosted many people coming from the east, like the Phoenicians, the Jews, the Arabs, the south, the sub-Saharan Africans came there, and the north, the Romans, the Andalusians, and all. All those civilizations have affected the social structure of Morocco. When I hear about Morocco, I think of what I've seen in the movies and all, and I see a, I think of a scene like this, you know, with this architecture and design and all. This is a Moroccan living room, and it just seems like, you know, that to me is Morocco. The other thing that comes to mind with Morocco is the city of Casablanca from the movie. Here's a title screen from the Warner Brothers movie in Casablanca. Um, Casablanca is the largest city in Morocco. Um, it's a chief port and one of the largest financial centers in Africa. It's got about uh, 3.71 million people in the urban area and about four and a half in greater Casablanca. So Casablanca is considered the economic and business center of Morocco. Up here, Rabat. Rabat is the actual capital, um, the national political capital, but Casablanca is really the biggest city and um, the center of, of, of Morocco. This is a good map. You can see here's Rabat, the uh, capital. Here's Casablanca, just a little down the Atlantic coast from that. Another uh, city you may be familiar, especially if you know the Crosby, Stills and, Crosby, Stills and Nash song, Marrakesh Express. Here's Marrakesh down here. Um, that's the fourth largest city in Morocco. You've probably also heard of Tangier. You can see Tangier is right here on the Strait of Gibraltar. Here's Spain. This is incredible how close this is to Europe. Here's Tangier, Spain, Europe, Africa. Just this little Strait of Gibraltar here separating them going into the Mediterranean Sea. Here's Fez. You might have heard of Fez. You might have heard of Taza. You know, there's a lot of... Uh, uh, Fez is the second largest city after Casablanca. Um, Marrakesh is fourth largest. You know, it's just a... I think from all the movies and TV shows and all, Morocco has just been uh, fascinating to me. And uh, some of these names, Taza, Fez, Marrakesh, Casablanca, Tangier, you know, it's just, uh, it's great to put a, a map to the, some of those ideas. Now, you can't talk about Morocco without looking down here a second to Western Sahara. Here, here's an interesting one. This in the green here, it's Western Sahara. Okay, here's Morocco, and we've been through this. But Western Sahara is a disputed territory. Um, Morocco claims ownership of the non-self-governing territory. It used to be known as Spanish Sahara, but it's Western Sahara now. Um, and it, Morocco's designated it as its southern provinces. So, there's a lot of history and politics there that we're really not going to get into. It is one of the most sparsely populated territories in the world. It's mainly consists of desert flatlands. So let's take a look. So here's a better map here. You can see, okay, it's got Morocco up there, Algeria, Mauritania. Okay, this is all the Sahara Desert. So because of the Sahara Desert there, the Western Sahara is one of the most sparsely populated territories in the world. It's mainly consisting of these desert flatlands. The population is estimated just over 500,000. About 40% of the whole population lives up here in Layoun. Um, it's the largest city in Western Sahara. 
So they were occupied by Spain until 1975, and they've been on the uh, West, on the United Nations list of non-self-governing territories since 1963, um, because of the whole situation with Morocco and all. So this large area here, this green area under to the south of Egypt, is, is Sudan. Okay, um, for a long time the region along the Nile River south of Egypt has been called Nubia. You may have heard of like a Nubian queen or something like that. So Sudan is slightly less than a fifth the size of the United States. And we're not going to get into the politics or history except to say that South Sudan uh, became independent in July of 2011. Okay, so here's Sudan. This is a good map of the population distribution in uh, in northern Sudan, or, or just Sudan. So you can see, here's the capital of Khartoum, okay, bordered by Egypt, Libya, Chad, Central African Republic, South Sudan, Ethiopia, Eritrea. Um, so outside of the ribbon of settlement that corresponds to the banks of the Nile, um, it's sparsely populated because of the dry Sahara. So the population is, you know, around Khartoum, and southeast between the Blue and the White Nile Rivers. And here, remember from the Nile River Fun with Maps episode how the Blue and White Nile merge here and also uh, throughout South Darfur. So that's the population there. And you can see that just with all this desert here, people just don't live there. In the West, one of the things we've always heard about Sudan is Darfur. Um, that's this region over here in the West. That's Darfur. Um, Dar is an Arabic word meaning home of. So uh, the fur uh, were first historically mentioned in the 1600s, the German traveler. And it's claimed that, like the word Sudan, fur means black. It was a name given by the early light-colored Berber sultans of Darfur to the original inhabitants of the company of the country, such as the Binga and Banda and all. So, um, it's the uh, home of blacks. Here's another good map. You can see here Khartoum, the White Nile, here the Blue Nile, here. Remember, the Blue Nile starts in Ethiopia. It's the White Nile. And then here you got Darfur, home of the fur, and it goes up Khartoum and Egypt, Red Sea, Port Sudan. All this though is uh, Sahara Desert, so that's a tough place to live. We're not going to get into Darfur or the the political issues with Darfur or the Lost Boys of Sudan or any of that, but you should check it out. It's fascinating stuff, but we're concentrating on the maps here. So the last country we're going to look at here in North Africa is Tunisia, and that's this little green strip here between Libya and Algeria. So Tunisia, you might not be very familiar with Tunisia, but if you're a history buff, you certainly know Carthage. Carthage was an ancient Phoenician city-state and civilization that was located, you know, in present-day Tunisia. Okay, and it was a major commercial maritime power. It just dominated the uh, the uh, uh, Mediterranean, especially the Western Mediterranean, until the mid-third century. You can see from the map here how close it is to, say, Sicily here, you know, in boot of Italy and the rest of Europe. So. Carthage um, with the Phoenicians here so close it was not only the most important trading hub of the ancient Mediterranean but it was one of the most affluent cities of the, uh, the classical world <clears throat> but it's uh, Tunisia today is only like 63,000 square miles so it's the smallest country in North Africa um, it's got the eastern end of the Atlas Mountains that we talked about and the northern reaches of the Sahara Desert and much of the remaining territory is ir irritable. So 
its northernmost point, as we said in the beginning, uh, Cape Angela is the northernmost point of Africa. In 2019, they had 11.7 million people. The capital here is Tunis, and that's where you get the name Tunisia. It's slightly larger than Georgia, okay? So you history buffs know about the Carthini uh, Carthaginian invasion of Italy with Hannibal and the Punic Wars and all that stuff where they really crippled the rise of the Roman power. Um, once the Second Punic War ended in like 200 BC, uh, Carthage ended as a client state of the Roman Republic. In 1956, the French finally recognized Tunisia as an independent state. So we know all about Carthage. It's a great history. You should check it out. Not unexpectedly, here's a population map of uh, Tunisia up here by the Mediterranean on the coast. That's where most of the population here. This is the end of the Atlas Mountains here. This is all Sahara Desert. So it makes sense that the people are going to be up here. And you see how close, here's Sicily, how close uh, Tunisia is to that. Pretty cool, huh? So next time you hear that Dylan song where he sings about uh, the girl being in Algiers or you hear Crosby, Stills and Nash sing uh, Marrakesh Express or you watch the movie Casablanca, you're going to know a little more. I think uh, North Africa is a fascinating area. We're going to look at some of those uh, countries in more detail in future episodes of Fun with Maps. But our next one is going to be another region of Africa. Um, maybe it'll be the central, maybe the east, maybe the west, maybe the southern. I don't know yet. We're going to work on that. But it's a fascinating continent, the 54 countries making up this uh, second largest continent. It's really exciting. So I hope you had as much fun with maps as I did today. I'm your host, Dan Hansen, and please, if you liked it, click on like, and uh, it's even better if you subscribe so you don't miss, miss an episode of Fun with Maps. We'll see you next time.